Hey, how's it going? You're tuned in with Tech Down. In today's episode, I'll be talking about how to become a software developer in a three to six month time span. So tune in, don't go anywhere. I'll be listing out a bunch of keys and concepts that I wish I had before I started my journey. Okay, so first, what you want to do, you want to gain as much information and knowledge as possible about a software developer. And what I mean by that is do some research. Google, 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 Google. Now, you want to Google because that's going to be your best friend, first off, when you become a software developer. I'm going to let you know that right now. You're going to Google 100% of the time. Okay, I'm boosting with 100%, but um, 80 to 90% of the time, you will be Googling. And any software developer will tell you this. Now, once you gain enough knowledge and information about the software developer, you will then come to terms knowing that there are three different roles for this position. You have your front-end developer, you have your back-end developer, and you have your full-stack developer. Now, your front-end developer deals with how the user interacts with the website or application, while your back-end developer deals with the server-side functionalities of the application. Now, this in turn, let me put this in terms where you can understand. Your back-end developer deals with the under-the-hood stuff is what we like to call it. And then you have your full-stack developer. Your full-stack developer does both. Now, I chose front-end. Why did I choose front-end? I have no clue why I chose front end. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I chose front end because I am a numbers guy. Now, and this is an unpopular opinion where I'm about to get up with this. I feel that front end is less complicated and it's also more exciting, as I want to say. I'm not calling nothing boring here, but it's more exciting. And I also feel that, um, this is not a feel, this one is a fact. Forget the unpopular opinion part. This is a fact. There's a lot of jobs out there for front end work. You can hit the ground running really fast once you understand these concepts for front end dev. Now, this is how you become a front end dev. First, you need to learn the big three. And no, I'm not talking about LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh big three. I'm talking about the front end dev big three. Your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript. HTML, your hypertext markup language. It is your tags. Now, look, hold on before I get going about HTML. I really love talking about programming, so I'm going to try my best to explain this in a way where you can understand me and not be confused. So let's say this. Let's say this. Okay. So your hypertext markup language, right? Your HTML. Let's say, let's start with a house. We, we're at, we have a house. Now, let's start with a story. Let's do a story. So, we want to have a door, right? So people can get in and get out. This is your HTML. We're going to lay, we want to place a door here. That's our tag. We have doors. What, what else do we need in the store? We have signs. We have bathrooms and etc. Obviously, you get where I'm going here. Your HTML is basically it's the structure of the website. It's where we're placing these elements. So we're, we have our door. We're starting with our door so people can get in and get out. Then you have your CSS, your cascading style sheets. Now, back to the term with the store. Your CSS is how you decorate. We're gonna decorate this store. We want our door to be a specific color. Hey, let's do gray. We're gonna throw a gray door out there. Now this is where CSS comes into play. We're styling our store. We're styling all of our store. We're styling our page. And then we jump into, matter of fact, before we jump, let's say we want this door to open and close, right? We wanna automate it too, let's get fancy. Let's get us the automated door. So now we're about to jump into JavaScript. JavaScript is going to allow us to have an automated door. It's going to allow, it's going to open when someone walks up. It's going to close when people leave, no one's there. This is where your JavaScript comes in. At. It is your functionality of the page. It's, it's how you can, can, can do certain actions and whatnot. Now you can learn those three languages from a variety of different sources for free. And I'm going to give you some as I speak. You have Code Academy, you have Free Code Camp, and you have W3 Schools. Now, those are the three I like to use, and I still use them to this day, and I was using them when I first started my journey beginning on learning how to code or whatnot. And I will leave those linked in the description below. Now, once you learn those, you then want to jump in into learning a version control system. Now, I say learn Git because a variety of companies uses Git. What Git does is track different changes and versions of your code and it allows you to collaborate with different developers and work code. Now, once you get the midst of all of that, you then want to jump into learning a library of framework. And I'm going to give you three really popular ones. You have React, you have Angular, and you have Vue. Now, I chose React, and I believe you should too. And the reason why I'm saying this is because React is very popular on the job market. And once you start getting a great understanding of what the concepts I just gave you, you then want to start building projects. Well, actually, matter of fact, build projects every step of the way. Build projects with HTML, build projects with CSS, build them together. Then build projects with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Then build you some projects in React or whatever language or library framework you choose to go with. 
I say build projects along the way because that is what's important. This is what's going to get you hitting the ground and running. Once you get comfortable with building projects on your own, you are now ready to take on real world projects. You are now ready to become a freelancer. Once you become a freelancer, you are a true front end developer. You are now ready to hit the ground running. You are in the ball game. Taking on these freelance projects, you then want to uh, dock up your resume or whatnot. I'm not saying lie on it. But I'm just saying, dock up your resume and then put these freelance gigs that you're doing on your resume and you want to put it on your portfolio website. And speaking of a portfolio website, that is a great place to start. Build you a portfolio website as a project. I'm not saying make that your first project because that can be quite complicated. I know, trust me, I've been there. But I'm saying you need to have a portfolio website. Now, the reason why I'm saying take on freelance gigs is because you want some revenue. You want something in return for all the hard work that you're putting in and you're doing. And trust me, I'm going to tell you realistically what people do not tell you. It is not as sweet as you think it is. It is very complicated in getting your foot in the door professionally. So that's why I say take on these freelance gigs first so you can have some, you're, you're, at, you're actually getting revenue. You're actually, you know, surviving while you're waiting on your job or when you're waiting on that. Yes. Not only that you're waiting on that. Yes. You're actually building up real life experience because you're actually doing real world projects. Now, yes, I would say that is the keys of becoming a front end developer in the quickest way as possible. Now, if you believe I explained this in a way that you can understand, please hit that like and subscribe button for me. And please stay tuned in because there's going to be more valuable information down the road. And yes, that is the Tech Done tuning out today. Thank you so much.